Good evening. This is Mordechai Kutkis at the tomb of King David. Yeshiva Nefesh Achayim. A special thanks to Rabbi Yaakov Shepherd, the head of this wonderful yeshiva, where Kabbalah and other subjects are taught right at the tomb of King David. And thanks to the site, the Spirit of Torah, for allowing us to offer these wonderful shiurim, these lectures in Torah. I will not be speaking about Kabbalah. I will be speaking about the revealed portions of the Zohar. And we begin with a fascinating story. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, the author of the Zohar, had a student by the name of Rabbi Yitzchak. And Rabbi Yitzchak approached his friend Rabbi Yehuda one day, and he seemed sad. Rabbi Yitzchak was upset by something. He was perturbed. And Rabbi Yehuda asked him, why are you upset? What's bothering you? And Rabbi Yitzchak said, I think my days God forbid, are coming to an end. How do you know, asked Rabbi Yehuda. Because, replied Rabbi Yitzchak, whenever I pray the 18 benedictions, the Shemona Esrei, three times a day, when I say the benediction of Shomea Tfila, God hears all prayers, I look at the wall and I see my shadow. And I notice my shadow is not, is not there anymore. It's a sign that God is no longer listening. So, I'm scared. I think the time is coming. They so Rabbi Yitzchak made three requests. He said, Rabbi Huda, please do me a favor. First of all, any time I ever said words of Torah and you repeat them, mention my name because after a person dies, he gets special pleasure and special satisfaction when people say over Torah in his name. Second, I have a son by the name of Yosef, and I have not completed his education. Please sit with him and teach him Torah. And third, after I die, come to my grave the first seven days and pray at my gravesite. This is because even Sadiqim are judged during the first seven days. It is almost impossible not to receive some kind of punishment during that time. And Rabbi Yitzhak was worried about this. Of course, Rabbi Yehud agreed. And then they informed Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Shimon took a look at his beloved student and he said, your time has not come yet. I want you to come with me into place where we study. And he asked his son, Rabbi Elazar, to stand by the gate and do not let anybody in unless he's a regular. The Malach Amavis, the angel of death, wanted to come in, but he was not allowed in because he wasn't a regular. And Rabbi Yitzchak described the dream that he had. His father had come to him. And he asked his father, what is my place like, the Garden of Eden? His father said, well, for the last three days they've been preparing it. You have a beautiful place in the Garden of Eden. You have just lack one thing. You have not taught your son enough Torah. Rabbi Shimon said, don't worry. I'll save you. And Rabbi Yitzhak stayed with Rabbi Shimon. He did not leave his presence until finally the decree was absolved. Rabbi Yitzhak went on to live for an additional 20 years. He lived and he was a faithful student of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. And on that Lag Ba'omer, the last day of Rabbi Shimon's life, when Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai went up to the heavens, Rabbi Yitzhak joined him. From this story we learn the importance of being close to a great tzaddik. 
even if one feels that he is great. Like Rabbi Yitzchak, who was a very great person in his own merit. But it's worthwhile, in fact, it's crucial to have a closeness and a good relationship with the tzaddik. Our parsha, Parsha's Vayechi, begins with the words, Vayechi Yaakov Be'eretz Mitzrayim Shvayas Veshama. And Yaakov lived in the land of Egypt for 17 years. The Zohar wonders, why was it important to mention this? Why does it say that he lived for 17 years in Egypt? The Torah is not a history book. It comes to teach us very important things. And a similar question was asked a number of weeks ago when we read the portion of Vayeshev. There, the portion begins, Vayeshev Yaakov ve'eres mukurei aviv. And Yaakov lived in the lands of the sojourns of his father. Eile todos Yaakov. And these are the offspring of Yaakov. Yosef in Shvaz Roshanah. And Yosef was 17 years old. Again, the Zohar asks, why did the Torah mention that Yosef was 17 years old? And the Zohar gives a beautiful answer. Yaakov Avinu loved his son Yosef very dearly. When Yosef was born, Yaakov experienced the best years of his life. They took good care of Yosef and they learned Torah together. Yosef was at a higher level than all his other children. And Yaakov was so happy until that dreaded day when his children brought him Yosef's coat full of blood. And Yaakov said, Tarof, Taraf, Yosef. Yosef has been torn apart by a wild animal. And he was thrown into a, a deep spell of despair and depression.